Hello, and thank you for your purchase of a Climatite product. Now that you have your new motor, we want to help you get it up and running as soon as possible. If you don't want to watch this whole video, you can jump straight to the section that you do want now. First, a couple of notes about your new motor. It was designed predominantly for Ream, Rudd, Weather King, and Corsair condensers, although it works with a few other brands as well. It is a unique motor for a couple of reasons. First off is that the motor was designed to replace both three wire and four wire motors. Now having said that, this replacement motor has five wires, so we're going to show you how to connect it for your application. Second is that this motor is designed to replace both 1 5th and 1 6th horsepower motors. And third, and most importantly, it mounts with four screws going into the sides of the motor shell, whereas most condenser fan motors mount using threaded bolts coming out the back end of the motor. Tools that you might need for this job are going to include a quarter inch socket or drill bit, a wire nut, tape or cable ties, a crescent wrench, and in some cases, a fan blade puller. Okay, let's get started. The first step when replacing your condenser fan motor is to make sure to turn the power off. Now, most of the time you can pull the plug out of the disconnect box, but if you don't have a disconnect box, you'll need to find your breaker before continuing on to the next step. Second, go ahead and take the screws out that are holding the top cabinetry of your AC unit together. In most applications where this motor is used, they will be quarter inch screws. Now third, you're going to want to pivot and flip the condenser lid over, laying it upside down on top of the AC unit. In most cases, the motor wires will be long enough to allow this to happen, but in rare instances, you may have to trace the motor's wires back to the control cabinet and disconnect them before you can flip the lid over. If you are able to flip the condenser lid over without unwiring it, well, the next step is still to trace and disconnect the motor wires anyway. But before you disconnect any wires, we recommend that you take a picture of the control cabinet with your phone. You can refer back to it when wiring up your new motor. If you prefer, written notes can be handy as well. Fourth, you're going to want to take the fan blade off while the motor is still attached to the lid of the unit. In order to do this, first you're going to want to measure from the lid of the unit up to a given spot on the fan blade and mark that spot on the fan blade with a permanent marker. Write down what that measurement was so that when you reinstall the fan blade, you get it back to the exact same spot. Next, loosen the set screws on the fan blade and lastly, remove the fan blade off the motor completely, being careful not to bend or twist it in any way that would change its pitch. Now keep in mind, sometimes the old fan blades have become quite attached to their old friends and to get it off, you may have to put a wrench on the old motor shaft and work it back and forth with some lubricant oil. And if this doesn't work, there may be some instances in which you need a fan blade puller. If you do, there's one in the link below in the description. Now for step five, remove any brackets holding the motor wiring to the cabinetry. Unscrew the side screws that hold the motor in place, which should be quarter inch screws and remove the old motor. Now to reassemble, just go through the exact same steps in the reverse order. We mentioned before that this motor replaces quite a few older models, including three and four wire motors. So let's take a quick look at how to wire the new motor in, starting first with how to replace a three wire motor. You're going to take the black wire from your new motor and hook it to the top of your condenser contactor in the same place where the old wire went, which is probably also a black wire. Next, you're going to take the orange wire and connect it to your dual capacitor. All three wire motors operate on a dual capacitor, so you're going to have one in your system already. You're going to look for the capacitor terminal stamped C and plug the orange wire into that terminal. Now to the purple wire. The purple wire will also run to the dual capacitor, but connect to the terminal stamped fan. This should leave you with just two wires left, the brown and the yellow wires. For these, you're going to want to strip the ends of the wires, twist the copper ends together. Afterwards, take a wire nut and then some tape so that no copper is exposed or showing. After you get done reassembling the unit, take a screwdriver and give the fan blade a spin. You want to make sure that it spins freely and doesn't hit any of your wires or anything else for that matter. The last thing you're going to want to do is to make sure that the rotation of your motor is correct. So when you're finished assembling the system, flick on the main power just long enough to see which direction the motor is going to spin. If it rotates the wrong direction, you can reverse the rotation by simply switching the purple and brown wires. And so that's all there is to it for a three wire condenser fan motor. And now we're going to take a quick look at how to hook up a four wire condenser fan motor. 
A four-wire condenser fan motor does not use a dual capacitor, but rather a single capacitor, which has two sets of terminals instead of three. So step one, take the black wire from the new motor and connect it to where the old wire came off the contactor. Step two, connect the, both the orange and the purple wires to the other half of the contactor, as seen here. Now most contactors have about four wiring terminals on each side on each leg, so you should have plenty to use. And this should leave you with just two wires left, once again the brown and the yellow. Each of these will go to your single capacitor. They can go to either side of the single capacitor. You just want to make sure that they don't both go to the same terminal set. You need one on each set of terminals. And just like with the three wire motors, the last thing you're going to want to do is to make sure that the rotation of the motor is correct. So when you're finished reassembling the system, flick on that main power just long enough to see which direction it's going to turn. If it isn't the correct direction, you can once again reverse the rotation by switching the purple and brown wires. That's all there is to it. So if for some reason you need some further help, you can of course drop us an email at climatech at northamericahvac.com or if you're between the hours of 8 and 4 Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, you can click on the live chat button at the top of our homepage. So now you've got your new motor, you're about to have cool air again, we just ask that you take a moment while sitting in your nice cool house to leave us a positive review. Thanks again for your business and stay cool.